If you're getting ready to attend your first ever autocross, you're about to have a lot of fun, meet some great people, and learn a lot about performance driving. In this video, we're going to talk about getting your car ready for autocross. First off, everything we're going to talk about applies to events put on by our club, the Texas Spoke Sports Car Club. That being said, most autocross clubs use a similar format, so this will be a good watch no matter who is putting on the event. Preparing for tech inspection beforehand will help you save time and headaches the morning of the autocross, and it will help us keep the event running as smoothly as possible. Before we talk about your vehicle, we have to make sure you pass tech. Wear closed-toed shoes, and if you have a Snell-approved helmet, bring it with you to tech inspection. If not, we have loaner helmets available on site. Note that while Spokes only requires DOT-approved helmets, other organizations or events, such as SCCA-hosted autocrosses, may require M or SA-rated helmets. Check on the helmet rules for whichever organization you are running with. Cars are grouped into classes, depending on their inherent capabilities and taking into account any modifications you may have made. If it's your first time, you might be wondering what class your car is in. We adhere to classing from the SCCA solo rules. So take a look at the SCCA rulebook and try to figure out which class your car falls into. If you're still not sure, a great place to ask is our Facebook group. Post the year of your car, the make and model, along with any modifications, and you should get an answer pretty quickly. If all else fails, a tech inspector will help you figure it out the morning of the event. At your first event, we recommend registering in the novice class. You can stay in the novice class for up to six events or until you win. Being in the novice class adds an N at the front of the class letters you will display on your vehicle. For example, if your car is in G Street or GS, the letters on your car would become NGS for novice G Street. In addition to your class letters, you will also display your number. Numbers are chosen on a first come first serve basis and any number between 1 and 99 will suffice. If two drivers are sharing the car, then the second driver will have a number that is 100 plus the first driver's number. So for example, if the first driver's number was 52, the second driver would be 152. At tech inspection, our tech workers will check that your class letters and number are clearly displayed on both sides of the vehicle. They should have high contrast against the color of your car. For example, a white car might use blue or black tape or magnets, but not yellow or beige. Numbers should be at least eight inches tall and class letters should be at least four inches tall. This is so that course workers are able to read it clearly from 50 feet away as you speed by on the track. It is your responsibility to check with registration to make sure that the class letters and numbers displayed on your car match what we have in the timing computer. Now, let's go over the main items that will be checked on your vehicle at the morning tech inspection. It's a good idea to check these items yourself the day before so you can address any issues beforehand. Tires are a critical item. Make sure there are no cords visible on any tire. All lug nuts must be present and tight on your wheels. There should be no play in the wheel bearings or suspension. If you see a tech worker pulling on your wheels, this is what they're checking for. Any leaking fluids will fail tech inspection, so check under the hood and under the car for leaks in brake fluid, coolant, oil, or power steering fluid. Your battery must be secure. Check that your battery tie down is tight along with everything else under the hood. Tech inspectors will also check your pedals. Both the brake and accelerator pedals should be working properly. The brakes should be firm and the accelerator should return smoothly. Please be aware of anything that your pedals could get stuck on. This could be something as simple as a piece of worn carpet or even small debris. Secured floor mats are okay to stay in the car, but loose floor mats must be removed from the vehicle, as well as any other loose items in the cabin and trunk areas. This includes removing loose change 
phone chargers, garage door openers, and anything hanging from your rear view mirror. All vehicles must have some type of functioning seat belt, whether it is a factory seat belt or a racing harness. And of course, your seat should be bolted down and secure. Another tech item that could keep you off the course is the height versus width rule. This rule stipulates that your car's track width measured at the middle of the tires must be greater than the height of the car. This rules out most SUVs, trucks, and vans unless they are modified with substantial lowering. Some cars won't make the cut either. For example, the Fiat 500, the non-ST versions of the Ford Fiesta, and similar cars won't pass tech without suspension modifications that have lowered the car. There's no need to break out the tape measure on your Camaro or Honda Civic. Unless you've installed a lift kit, your car will be well within the regulations. A more detailed description of this rule is available in the SCCA rulebook. Sound is also worth noting, as some of our venues have a noise limit that we have to respect. The decibel level limit varies at different venues. If your car is excessively loud, it's better to ask beforehand about sound limits. At your first event, we highly recommend registering in advance and arriving on site by 7.30 a.m. and heading to tech inspection as early as possible. If your class needs to be changed or if a tech item needs to be addressed, it's better to know that early so that we can help you get it fixed as soon as possible. Once you're teched and checked in at the trailer, be sure to attend the novice course walk that happens just before the driver's meeting. If you have any questions about passing tech inspection, you can comment below, send us an email, or join our Facebook group and start a discussion. If you have questions the day of the event, look for people in the orange hats. They will do their best to help you.